Hello and welcome to Wrestling Jeopardy, the ultimate interactive pro wrestling trivia challenge on YouTube where you're the contestant. I'm your host, Kevin J. Callis. And I hope you brought your swim trunks and your flippy floppies because we're about to test your knowledge of the biggest party of the summer. The Summerfest. No, we're talking about the one and only SummerSlam. The ultimate warrior. Stuck show. And with that, let's go to the board now and check out the categories you'll be quizzed on, starting with SummerSlam celebrity appearances, followed by SummerSlam defining moments, intercontinental title changes, SummerSlam promotional posters, and last but certainly not least, SummerSlam specialty matches. The anticipation is over! Now it's time to feel the heat! And with that, let's kick off the 200 point round. You should easily go five for five here, whether you want to or not. Great Bullet's gonna win, whether he wants to or not. So let's jump in and start with SummerSlam celebrity appearances for two. This country music star supplied the theme music for SummerSlam in 2024. And the correct answer, who is Jelly Roll? And that brings us to defining moments for two. Eight months after this wrestler's heel turn, at SummerSlam 2018, she would make history as the first woman to win the main event of a WrestleMania. Eating down her former best friend, Charlotte Flair, she evolved into the man, the correct answer, who is Becky Lynch? And moving on to intercontinental title changes for two. Brett the Hitman Hart struck singles gold for the first time in his career, submitting Mr. Perfect with this maneuver and claiming the Intercontinental Championship in 1991. And of course, the answer here, what is the sharpshooter? A few moments later. Ah! And we're on to promotional posters for two. What year is this? SummerSlam promotional poster from. One of the most iconic posters in wrestling promotional history. It was a highway to hell at the 1998 SummerSlam. All right, and let's finish off the 200 point round with specialty matches. What was the name of the specialty match that featured mankind versus The Undertaker at SummerSlam 96. And that would be, what is the Boiler Room Brawl? Have a nice day! All right, we're headed back to celebrity appearances for four. This actor received a Slammy Award for the Celebrity Moment of the Year as a result of his match at SummerSlam 2015. And the answer we're looking for here, who is Stephen Amell? Steve, 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 ah, right, right. And we're on to defining moments for four. With the mega powers reeling on the floor and momentum squarely on the side of the mega bucks, Miss Elizabeth climbed onto the apron and proceeded to take off this piece of clothing at the inaugural SummerSlam. Now, rumor has it that the powers that be from back in the day wanted Elizabeth to be in a skimpy bikini, but the Macho Man wasn't having any of that. So the correct answer is she ripped off her skirt. Oh my God! And moving on to Intercontinental title changes for four. At SummerSlam 2000, the big Val Boski, Val Venus, lost the Intercontinental belt in an intergender tag team match where this wrestler became the new champion. Uh -oh. 
Now, the rules of this match stated that the first person to score a pinfall would be declared the new champion. And it was a match between Val Venus and Trish Stratus versus Latino Heat, Eddie Guerrero, and the person who picked up the victory that evening, who was China. And that brings us to promotional posters for four. What year is this SummerSlam promotional poster from? What is 2017? And let's finish up the 400 point round. What was the name of the specialty match that featured Ray Wyatt versus Kane from SummerSlam 2013? A specialty match that would have made Johnny Cash proud. The correct answer, what is a Ring of Fire match? Let it burn, burn, burn. All right, 10 questions down, 15 to go. Hopefully you're not getting burned so far during this SummerSlam Wrestling Jeopardy. But if you're having a good time, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also the ringy dingy notification icon bell so you get notified whenever we come out with a brand new episode of Wrestling Jeopardy. Huh? 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 Come on, you know you want to. And we're headed back to the 600 point round, celebrity appearances. This former heavyweight boxing champion led the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith, to the ring at SummerSlam 1992. <laughs> Carrying the Union flag was none other than former heavyweight boxing champion, who is Lennox Lewis? And that brings us to defining moments for six. In 2002, Shawn Michaels returned to the ring after a four-year absence to compete in his first match since this WrestleMania. And it was a heck of a match, an unsanctioned street fight between HBK and his former best friend, Triple H. Shawn Michaels' first match back since WrestleMania 14. Moving on to IC title changes for 600. This NFL Hall of Fame running back was brought in to be Razor Ramon's corner man in 1994, helping the bad guy regain the Intercontinental title by defeating Diesel. Sweetness himself, who was Walter Payton? And we're on to posters for 600. What year is this SummerSlam promotional poster from? This is the worst. <laughs> now, I guess you could argue that the WWF designers at this time didn't have much to work with here. Considering the main event for SummerSlam 95 was Diesel versus King Mabel, is it any wonder that the business was down when the promotional material looked like this? And I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog Let's close out the 600 point round where I'd like for you to tell me what was the name of the specialty match that featured Shane McMahon versus Test from SummerSlam 1999. This one might have a couple of names to it. It was called technically the Lover or Leave Her Greenwich Street Fight, but if you said Greenwich Street Fight, you got the points. You had to do it, didn't you? All right, let's head over to Celebrity Appearances for 800. In the weeks leading up to SummerSlam 94, Naked Gun stars Leslie Nielsen and this actor were hired to find the missing Undertaker. And that, of course, another NFL Hall of Fame running back. Who was O.J. Simpson? What? No, it's not. Enough. Sorry, it wasn't O.J. The correct answer, who was George Kennedy? And we're on to defining moments for eight. In 2014, Brock Lesnar uncorked this many German suplexes on John Cena, squashing the superstar and winning 
the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Brock took John Cena to Suplex City a sweet 16 times that evening. Moving on to Intercontinental title changes for 800. The Ultimate Warrior ended the Honky Tonk Man's Intercontinental title reign after replacing original challenger Brutus Beefcake, who was unable to compete due to a gruesome attack the previous week by this outlaw wrestler. I remember watching this as a kid. They had the big, like, uh, red X that they censored because the outlaw, Ron Bass, was just carving up Brother Brutai's forehead with a cowboy spur. Beefcake Barber! And that brings us to promotional posters for 800. <laughs> There it is, this week's Daily Double. I want you to just run in your mind all the different SummerSlam promotional posters that you can possibly uh, think of and place your wager now. All right, time is up. Here is the Daily Double clue from promotional posters. What year is this SummerSlam promotional poster from? I mean, this really could have been any year in the uh, 2010s. There's nothing that talks about any specific matches, even though this SummerSlam featured Daniel Bryan defeating John Cena and getting his big moment, only for Randy Orton to come and cash the money in the bank briefcase on him. The correct answer here, this promotional poster is from SummerSlam 2013. And let's finish off the 800-point round what was the name of the specialty match that featured Ken Shamrock versus the Lethal Weapon Steve Blackman at SummerSlam 1999? Here at SummerSlam 99, this one was specifically called the Lion's Den Weapon Match, but we'd also accept the Lion's Den Match. Shamrock has won this Lion's Den and we've reached the most difficult round in Wrestling Jeopardy, the thousand point round. The steel cage begins to lower, the ominous music begins to play. Get your thinking caps on, and let's go to the final clue from Celebrity Appearances. This was the explanation given by Jon Stewart after he helped Seth Rollins retain his WWE title versus John Cena at SummerSlam in 2015. A classic match cheapened when The Daily Show host interfered only led to things getting worse the following night on Raw when Stewart explained he didn't want Cena to surpass Ric Flair's 16 world titles record. Say what? And that brings us to the final clue from Defining Moments. The return of Roman Reigns at SummerSlam in 2020 complete with this new catchphrase emblazoned on his t-shirt, put the entire WWE on notice. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Roman would lay low for five months, only to return with a new special counsel, a new set of chompers, and a new attitude where he was going to wreck everyone and leave. We said SummerSlam! You'll never see it coming! Moving on to Intercontinental title changes for 1,000. Had Stone Cold Steve Austin not won the Intercontinental title at SummerSlam in 1997, he would have had to do this to Owen Hart. Often overlooked due to the botched pile driver that broke Austin's neck and led to the worst roll-up in wrestling history was the stipulation that if Stone Cold lost, 
he would have to kiss Owen's ass. All right, pull down his little panties. All right. Bend over and I'll kiss him right on his All right. Put that in the contract. And we're on to the final clue from promotional posters. What year is this SummerSlam promotional poster from? Now the tagline here was, the party is over, and that was in reference to Triple H making a return from yet another torn quadricep that he suffered back in uh, January. But I don't know why he's like hanging out on a uh, deserted private island. Doesn't make any sense to me. But the correct answer, what is SummerSlam 2007? Let's close out the board with the final clue for the regular Jeopardy round. What was the name of the specialty match that featured the Cat versus Terry Reynolds at SummerSlam 2000? The feud between the Cat and Terry spanned most of the year 2000, even though neither woman was an accomplished wrestler. However, when you book something called a thong stink face match, then you clearly aren't doing it for the wrestling. All right, don't go anywhere unless you're going to get me like a Mai Tai or some sort of tropical drink because it's Final Jeopardy time, so let's find out what this episode's category is. SummerSlam commercials. From Brock Lesnar attacking a shark to a hilarious ode to the Olympics and a chaotic backyard barbecue, the WWE has always cooked up comical SummerSlam commercials. All right, think about how much you know about SummerSlam commercials and place your final Jeopardy wager, and now. All right, time is up. Let's take a look at the final Jeopardy clue. During the 2006 SummerSlam commercial, the coach snagged the last hot dog, drawing the ire of these two wrestlers. Good luck. During the 2006 SummerSlam commercial, the coach snagged the last hot dog, drawing the ire of these two wrestlers. Now, unfortunately for the coach, Jonathan Coachman, when the Big Red Machine and the world's largest love machine are hungry, you better get the heck out of their way. The correct answer, who was Kane and Viscera?